Today, you're going to learn how to build and reinforce a retaining wall in three steps. Starting off with step number one, your embedment layer. So I always start off with a trench. This one is 24 inches wide, but we have to take care of all of this loose soil because this is a problem right now as it is. And to get started, you know, I grab my tamper, compact that soil. This is going to prevent sinking. And what I'm doing now is I'm using the geo grid. This is a really a critical step that I want to do for this installation. And why I'm doing it is because the old retaining wall actually sunk and cracked at different rates. This is gonna prevent your retaining wall from settling. This is huge and that's why I'm doing it right here on the native soil. We're gonna take our geo grid, place it on our base here of your trench that you've just dug, that, that ruled out. And it's okay to obviously get this dirty because we have a lot of aggregate gonna go down on here, okay? Next up, we're gonna grab the aggregate. Three quarters, crushed, clear. That just means it's been washed. Okay, spread it out, use a rake. One of the biggest questions we get is, do you really need this much gravel? Answer, yes. You know when a retaining wall falls forward, it's usually because there wasn't enough drainage. We're gonna get into that. So don't forget your gravel. You're gonna need a lot. After you get a couple inches in, muscles. <laughs> so this right here is our drain line that we are gonna be installing. It is a perforated pipe. That just means there are holes on the bottom. Why? Because we get water coming up from the bottom from our water table and from the top. It's perforated, so pull it out. And this is the sock. We call this a sock. It's filter fabric designed to keep soil out. Now this is a critical step getting in your drain line. Have you ever seen a retaining wall that tips forward? That is because of hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic means water that doesn't move. What happens when you have water that doesn't move in behind a retaining wall? It's going to take the wall and it's going to push it forward. Very bad, very common. This is one component that's really going to help. Absolutely critical. All right, let's tie this up. You want to get a level on that. You want to check. Make sure that one side of your drain line is slightly higher than the other so it can actually drain. This is a drain. You have to remember to have proper grading. Muscles. Now, once you have your drain installed, you want to check that you're level across the width of the trench and along the length. This all has to be level, six inches of aggregate, thanks to this right here. Boom, this is what I'm installing today. It's heavy, it's about 43 pounds, like all the work that we do here. Get out your level. This is gonna be your best friend. You're gonna use this a lot. What is it telling us? Can you see that little bubble right there? And right there. So what do I do here? This side, it's gonna tell me right now that that is low. So if I lift that one side up, you're gonna get level. Little dusting of that. I think I need a little bit more. As you do this too, you're gonna know how much you need. Once you've done that, grab your hammer. It's got a dead blow. This is a great tool. Give it a whack. This helps set your stone, your block in place. This is a four pounder and I will link in the description because I got this one online. Okay, after you do one, the other ones are gonna be more simple. Let's take a look now at how we do our layout. So when it comes to layout, this is what we're using. I'm actually gonna start with this block, it's corner block, which means it has a finished face here, two finished faces on the side, corner block. And I have a square there, and I always like to start my construction of a retaining wall with the blocks. I like to start on one side and work my way down. Once you have your corner block set and it's stable, it's looking good, check for level. That's what you want. And at this point, you can move on to your next block and your next block. Now, what is really key here, and this is gonna determine the success of your project, one of the foundational elements, check it with a two foot level as you go. So your next piece, they have to be in line, right? Side to side, front to back. And then you get the big guys out, which is your four foot level or your six foot level if you have one. If you don't, I just use my four footer. Level is important, right? I'm hitting my string as I'm working here, but you do wanna check that you are keeping everything in line. That right there is what you're looking for. One, two, three, our corner, right? You can also have a string line here on the return if you want. 
what you're looking for here in the corner, if you have to make a cut, don't put a little sliver in the corner. Now, what I like to do, I want to see a nice solid piece at the end, move that cut piece, which should be at least half of your block into right here. So it's more stable and especially for that embedment course, make sure your cut piece is in the middle of your wall and not at the end. I've rented a saw, I've attached a garden hose to it to turn it into a wet saw to keep the dust down. It's a lot better like that personally. You gotta wear this, <laughs> wear this. Let's fill this area now quickly with gravel. We wanna maintain this work that we just did because it looks really fantastic. You guys are gonna save like 10, 15, $20,000 by doing this yourself. So let's get on to step number two, which is reinforcing it. Okay, so after filling the back, I'm just gonna fill the front now, the front of the trough, as you can see, it has to also have clean fill. And the reason we're doing this is to lock our blocks in place. We don't wanna see them move right now, so this is gonna hold it into place. Always clean before you move on to your second course. Very important, super important. You can see our first block here is put in lengthwise. Now, for the corner, you do not wanna ever put the same block on top, so you have two joints lining up. That's a big no-no for masonry or for retaining walls. Okay, I have a T and G system, so I'm gonna flip this block sideways. See that? Okay, so we have the long side on the opposite corner, and now the short side is here, and that is so we can stagger our joints. You always want to stagger your joints. Now you're gonna notice I have a tongue and groove system, and that is gonna make installation easier. There is another advantage here, right here on the front. Can you spot it? I'm gonna grab another block. So you can see the tongue and then the groove feature here. These are gonna lock in. Ugh. Watch your fingers too when you're doing this. So the advantage here with this type of block, this is a battered retaining wall. Battering is done to reinforce or make your wall stronger. Instead of a vertical wall, it is set back, maybe a half inch, three quarters of an inch, and that is to make your wall stronger when you're retaining soil because it's easier to push on a wall and lean into it, it's gonna be stronger than if you are just like this, right? So some of these are not as pretty. It's another thing, inspect your blocks. All right, that one's seen better days. Once you're finished with your second course, we're gonna reinforce this retaining wall because this is holding back a lot of soil for step number two of our reinforcement. So, so far, step one of our reinforcement has stabilized the base and made it stronger. For step two, right now we have this large retaining wall that's gonna be built and those blocks are gonna sit here and they're heavy. That makes one independent unit. And this is backfill, which makes another unit, which is really heavy. Now we're gonna use GeoGrid right here in a layer to mechanically connect our backfill to our retaining wall, making this mass a unit, not two separate ones, thereby making it stronger. It's gonna increase the load capacity of our re retaining wall, and it's gonna help to reinforce and stabilize the soil to keep this from creeping. Each joint should be nice and tight. Make sure each one is good going in. It's gonna make your job so much simpler. And we'll double check everything. Whoa before the next one goes in. Sometimes it slips around on you, but we want to keep the geogrid nice and straight, nice and uniform. The good thing is each block is going to help to lock it in place, all right? So our first layer of geogrid was here. Two more courses, which is a foot. Second layer of geogrid going here. Now, if you take a look here, it's raining. I have tarps everywhere because I'm trying to just keep the water away from the slope. We're on a hillside and the soil up top of this hill wants to move down, especially in the rain. So geogrid is gonna help with the soil erosion because it has this thing called a creep reduction factor. And that means it helps to stabilize and prevent the soil from moving down the hillside, which is important in erosion control and hillside control. Okay, so I'll put the tarp back, the plastic, 
and you can see it's all around. We want to roll out the geo grid now for our second layer on the retaining wall. Roll this out. So once you have your second layer of geo grid in, you can continue on with stacking your blocks right on top of the geo grid. Get your gloves on, watch your hands. All right. So this right here is gonna be my last block. We're gonna leave this at six course, this at five. Be sure to wear gloves, by the way. Your hands are gonna take a beating. This has a high pH level, it dries your skin big time, especially with the wet saw. Yeah, concrete, it's rough. Okay, let's get our coping, our drainage rock, and I'm gonna show you how to tuck this in. Now, what I'm looking for here is, ugh, you wanna do a deep squat, by the way, with that. These are heavy, they're 75, and these are interlocking. You can see there is a groove and these are heavy, but be careful with these. We're just gonna twist these around. I kind of have a bit of a problem here. Can you spot it? When you order your coping, you have this beautiful live edge. If you are going to stagger your retaining wall height, you're gonna need a live edge here. I don't have that. I'm gonna use the coping that I have right now. And I'm just gonna dry fit these. That's looking good. Okay, and for your coping, you're gonna see it has a raised part here and a raised part there. Watch your fingers here. That is just gonna act as a spacer as you push your coping together. Now, when you've done a good job of the installation, you're gonna see that these should fit nicely at the same level, right? It's smooth, and that is just because we took the extra time to use our levels, right? Same here on the side. This all lines up. All right, so now that we have created this very large gravel pit, we can't leave that like that. People would not appreciate that. We've got to beautify it, but we can't just use the regular soil because of the drainage issue, right? The water's just gonna go, it's drainage, right? So this is what garden soil looks like. So for the planting area of your retaining wall, I've got some garden soil. You can use some from your yard if you've got great soil, which some people are very lucky. What is this? This is potting mix. Why am I adding potting mix to this? Well, that's a good question. I'm using this because it's gonna hold the moisture in nicely. And you can see I've actually lined the front part of the flower bed with landscape fabric. We can tuck that in. You're gonna mix this up. Get in there, mix it up. All right, she, this right here is a beauty. It's called Turtle's Head. This isn't really the beautiful side of it, but it's a little root bound, just a little bit. That's what we do. Now roots, that's actually really important for retaining soil, isn't it? Often overlooked, but after you build your retaining wall, oh gosh. <laughs> okay, see how good at those roots are at retaining the soil? I actually can't get this off, this is kind of funny. Let's see what's happening here. This is what, how mother nature retains soil and this is a root bound plant, but we're gonna make it very happy soon. What's happened here? These roots, are gonna retain the soil, right? We have a neighbor soil here that is unretained. We're gonna dig that down a bit more. These root systems of the plants are gonna help that soil from the neighbors to stop from migrating downhill, right? That soil creep, you know, is gonna happen. And don't forget, beautiful movement right there on these plants. I've actually selected these plants because they're gonna have movement in them. When you have a really solid retaining wall like this, you want your plants to have some movement so that when the wind blows, you're gonna have some softness to what can be a very hard and imposing part of your garden. And we don't want that. We want this to just blend in nicely, cohesively. We wanna make this really a feature, right? Okay, so we have height, color, some softness. Let's put a little tradition in here. I love classics, how about you? We're gonna go with the hydrangea. Look at this beautiful one. And it has white blooms. One of the advantages of white blooms in a garden, do you know that it extends your garden so you can see it into the evening, right? White flowers, beautiful. Don't forget, clean that beautiful stone. Also important to note, if you don't want to use that big demo saw, I also use my grinder with a masonry cutting disc this actually worked beautifully. I got some really nice cuts with this. It just takes longer and you need a chisel as well. I will link to all of those, including our landscaping 
playlist in the description for you in, in case you want to add some wood to warm up your landscaping. I'm Dayru. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.